Well, hello everybody. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. And as usual, just look at all that stuff. It's time for a thrift haul. Let's see what I found this week. Uh, by the way, the music we started out with is Art Castle and his orchestra. And that's a tune called Hell's Bells. More suited for uh, Halloween, but uh, hey, what can I say? All right, right out front we have two little tiny anchor hawking green ruffled vases. These were produced from the late 40s into the early 50s. And I found one for 25 cents in one stop. And about two hours later, I found the second dude for 50 cents in another place. They're worth, well, they sell for maybe three, four bucks. Um, each, I'm just gonna hold on to these and see if I can find eight more and I'll sell ten of them. These are called uh, Colonial Knife and Fork. It's depression glass made by the Hawking Glass Company before they became Anchor Hawking and these were produced uh, let's see from 19 I want to say 1934 to 38 right in the mid 30s. It's a very popular pattern. Uh, Stemware is harder to find than some of the more typical, uh, more common pieces. These would be uh, small wine glasses, and they're probably going to be worth about 10 bucks each. So I'll see if I can get 20 bucks out of them. They were uh, $1 each. Keeping watch, well, listen, we haven't decided yet. The votes are not all tallied. Got a lot of suggestions. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and look at my last thrift haul video. Yeah, I know you're on the edge of your seats, but you're just going to have to wait. I'm not ready to reveal. It's going to be an exciting moment. Down front is something that I bought not really to sell. Uh, pretty sure I'm going to keep this. It's a little Scotty Dog cookie cutter in that typical green 19... That's that was the kitchen color of the 19 late 20s it appeared and it was very popular into the 1940s and then other colors took over mostly red um, but the Scotty dog was all over the place in the 1930s and 40s the same way the uh, poodle was in the 1950s and 60s and the smiley face but um why was the Scotty Dog so popular in the 30s and 40s? The Scotch Terrier, do you know why? Do you remember? Well, uh, FDR had a beloved pet who was a Scotch Terrier. FDR was uh, elected in 32. And his little dog, Falla, was known by Americans. Uh, he was photographed. FDR even uh, talked about Falla in uh, uh, in news conferences and one of his addresses to Congress he talked about Fala so the Scotty dog was enormously popular Scotty dogs showed up in bookends um, on greeting cards electric lamps you name it and even cookie cutters all right these are ten champagne glasses and these are flashed on uh, ruby red and a blue color these are so cool I don't know who made them. I tried to do a little research, couldn't find anything, but I love them. They have an iridescence to them as well as being flashed on, and there are 10 of these bad boys. I did pay a buck a piece, so $10 for these, but uh, somebody's going to flip over these, I hope. I had some flashed on Pilsner glasses that did not last long, and I have a feeling these are going to go pretty easily. Um. Gosh, I don't know. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I'm going to try to sell these for 60 bucks. You know, we'll see what happens. I might have to come down, but uh, I really like them. Back here, classic shape. This is the classic Victor coffee mug. And you'll see here in block letters. Well, that, one, that example isn't very really good. 
These things weigh probably a pound. There we go. Victor. These are made um, starting in 1945. Uh, the company that made them was the uh, Fred M. Locke Company in New York. And they named this mug the Victor. Has nothing to do with the Victor talking machines. But um, in the 1890s, the company originally made ceramic uh, uh, insulators for telegraph poles, telegraph lines. And then in 1945, they went into the restaurant wear business. And this really is the iconic shape of the classic 1940s, 50s, 60s coffee mug that you would find in diners all across the country. I found a total of 16 of them. They were 50 cents each. These mugs sell for between six and $10 each online. So I'm hoping I've got about $80 worth of uh, coffee mugs. They're in excellent shape, no chips, no cracks, no coffee stains, and they are super cool. Back there is a tea and coffee canister set. You've seen those before. Aluminum, mid-century. They were uh, 50 cents each. So I should be able to get about 12 or 15 bucks for the two of those. I sold this Christmas set and then I found three more odd pieces to it. Um, the Christmas set I sold, I think maybe last month, but, and if I remember correctly, this is left in although the foil, foil sticker has come off of this. One spare teacup, a little dessert bowl, and a lunch plate. So those I'll just put online as replacements. This is the second uh, milk, well, it's not milk glass, it's really ivory, although it's probably looking pretty white in this video. Uh, this is called the apple blossom pattern. And if memory serves, it was made by McKee. And it is depression glass it's from the 1930s. This is a religious statue that I picked up because uh, I really like the Art Deco style of that. Very graceful. Love the lines on it, on her. Just really beautifully made. There is a mark on it and maybe you guys can help me. I'm having a real hard time reading that. At first it looked like oven. I mean, I can see made in USA, but what's the rest of it say? Anybody know? I, I can't figure it out. So, if anyone does know, I have a feeling that it's from the 1930s. It just has that look to it. Here's a black metal lunch box in super fantastic condition. Believe it or not, this one actually dates from 19, sorry, this one dates from 1910 into the early 20s. This is an old one, and we know a couple reasons why. Number one, the handle. The ones from the 50s have plastic handles. This is a uh, pressed paper, condensed paper handle. Most of the faux uh, black leather finish is gone from it, but that's the old original handle. We also know that it's an older one because if you look at the side of it, the shape of it, the best I can describe that is sort of like a Dutch colonial house. The ones from the, the newer ones, I'm having a hard time here. Uh, the newer ones from the 50s, the sides, they, they, they just go straight down. They don't curve back out like this and come down in a, in a uh, sharp point like that. Also, this is where you'd put the name tag in of whoever was carrying it. And this one is marked on the bottom, Handy Andy, not Thermos. The ones that you see the most commonly, you'll see ones that have what looks like a V right here on the front. That's the Thermos Company. And they're also usually marked Thermos on the bottom. 
this one was not made by the thermos company this is handy handy and also if you look at the inside come on uh, the inside is really beautiful has this gold color to the metal on the inside Isn't that nice really nice. I mean there's no rust on this beautiful and the clasp on this is a very old style thermos cl uh, clasp as you can see so I was excited to find this I paid five bucks for it but it's a gr it's in great condition and a really good example of a very old lunchbox uh, some of these have a patent date on the bottom of 1919, but they do date back uh, as early as 1910. So this one is pretty vintage. This is made in Japan. It's called a whistling hot pot. Uh, and it's electric, as you can see. So we can pull this off. There's a metal burner on the inside and uh, then you just plug your cord in over here and the water heats up whistling hot pot I have not tried it yet I do have the electric cord I'm gonna say it probably dates to between 1950 and 1960 it looks like the 50s not really sure what the oh uh, yeah five bucks for this because of its condition and age I'm hoping to get maybe 35 bucks for it here's a green anchor container uh, really nice water jug and it'll say it says juice can you see it, it says juice on that side and water on this side I had another one of these a while back. That one was in brown. And yes, you can get lids for these. This is a pretty universal top here. And I actually uh, found a lid from a jelly jar that fits this. So this can be used in the refrigerator to keep your ice water nice and cold. Back there is a fantastic 1950s, late 40s, early 50s General Electric kitchen clock in super condition just look at the paint on that there's one little scratch right there but that is good condition for a kitchen clock that clock sells for between 50 and 90 dollars online um, I've seen four or five examples of it sell fairly recently for about that much so this one is in great shape General Electric it's running perfectly and quietly as you can see also marked on the back the original sticker paper label rather with the model number and everything so I see no reason why this wouldn't bring uh, hopefully in the $50 range so we'll say I like to be conservative you know the one that went for $90 who knows but this one hopefully will bring about 50 bucks and I paid ten dollars for it because I knew I would make a decent profit on it here's just some rare rare I meant to say random uh, what I'm gonna say is Japanese China from the 1920s there's the creamer and the sugar bowl and back there are uh, dessert bowls and underplates. There are what six of them? Six dessert bowls, berry bowls, and six underplates all stacked up. No teacups or saucers or anything. It says on the bottom Spencer. That's all I know. And that was real cheap. This is a Cambridge ice bucket in a wildflower pattern manufactured from 
the 40s into the 50s. Cambridge made, always made ice buckets with their elegant depression glass. This one is nice because the original hammered uh, handle is with it and the matching top tongs have stayed with it. You can see that they uh, match this handle perfectly. If I can show it to you, you see that? The tongs and the handle are a match. So this wouldn't necessarily be used for cocktails. There would be iced tea glasses, goblets that would be served at, at dinner time, and an ice bucket could be brought to the table. A very elegant way to, to serve ice to your guests. And again, that's called the wildflower etched pattern. This was $2. This ice bucket, 15 years ago, brought twice what it would bring now. I'll see if I can get 30 bucks for it. These are not salt and pepper shakers, although when I picked them up, I thought they were. There are no holes in their heads. They're not marked Japan, but they probably are. And it's two more of these little kissing Dutch people. So turn around, give her a kiss. Oh, she's mad. He has halitosis. Come on, sweetie, turn around. There you go. Let's try this again. Isn't that cute? All right. Um, I also, in I think it was one or two thrift hauls ago, I had another set of kitchen Dutch ki kissing Dutch people, and they were salt and pepper shakers. Now I have two subscribers from the Netherlands, so I want to know. All right, I'm asking my Dutch friends, what is it with the the kissing Dutch? Is it a thing? Am I missing something? It's kind of cute. So these would just be from the 50s and they would sit in somebody's kitchen and look real cute. Now, I know you think I'm nuts the way I collect these old sockets. As you know, I use these to restore antique light fixtures, but when I get really good ones, I sell them. Now, you might think it odd, but these two sockets would actually sell for close to 20 bucks online. Um, they're called Fat Boys. Uh, fat Boy sockets are wider here. The newer sockets are a uniform diameter from top to bottom. Fat Boy because these have sort of a, a chubby, uh, tubby base to them. And then they're tapered. This one is Weber, very desirable. This one has its original pull chain. And these sockets can date from between 1905 into the early 20s. And people that are restoring vintage lamps, especially really good slag glass lamps and expensive table lamps from the era, they want old original brass lamp sockets. So those two right there would sell for about 15 or 20 bucks. And the last thing I want to show you that I'm most excited about, we'll move our little Dutch folk aside. They can go over there and do their little kissing thing. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? That, um, that's an original, not a reproduction. And that dates to the Art Nouveau era. You know, Art Nouveau was not as popular in the United States as other countries. Anyway, I got distracted for a minute. I'm sorry, I'm back. Uh, and this is called a jewelry casket. And just look how beautiful that is. Now, I've got to do some more work to determine if it is gilded bronze, which would be ormolu. And this company was very famous for its ormolu. If it's gilded bronze, it's ormolu. And, or it may just be a gilded metal of some other type. I'm not certain yet, but look how beautiful that is. Spin it all the way around so you can see it. It's a larger, this is the larger size, and an extra added bonus when we lift it open is the original silk lining on the inside. So this is probably circa 1905 to 1910. This is the period 
before Art Deco. This is, uh, of course, a French style. We can see the inside needs to be, I need to clean it a little bit. And there's a little bit of ripping in the original silk, but this is the original lining to this. Absolutely beautiful. I don't, I seldom find good pieces of uh, Art Nouveau. All right, who made it? Let's turn it over, look at the bottom. When I found it in the shop, I zoomed in right here to JB. JB is Jennings Brothers. You ever see anything with a JB on the bottom of it? Pick it up. They were a manufacturing company in Bridgeport, Bridgeport Connecticut. And they are known for their exquisite work. They didn't mass produce anything. Everything was made. Great detail was given to these pieces. They were exquisitely done. They were expensive when they were made. And the company is well known for uh, bookends, candlesticks. Oh my goodness. Uh, obviously jewelry boxes and jewelry caskets. Uh, other decorative metal pieces. And this is a fine example of their work. I stole it for 20 bucks. And I have to do some more research before I tell you what I think I can sell it for. It depends on whether it is gilded. It's gilded, but whether it's bronze or not, I don't yet know. So I will be letting you know shortly. And it's just really pretty. All right. So I will back up, let you see everything again. Oh, have you seen these yet? Look at this. Luden's Blue Raspberry. I don't even have a sore throat, but I saw these in the store and I had to get them. These things are so good, I'm eating them like candy. All right, so that's it. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying, thanks for watching. You can still get your vote in, right? And I promise you, I'm not gonna leave you on the edge of your seats too much longer. All right, everybody, have a fantastic weekend. So long for now.